Costa Brat, as a nomadic seducer in Sofia, Bulgaria, I got laid more, got paid more, established better friendships, and left with more good memories and lessons learned than other cities where I've spent a similar amounts of time. And in this video, I'm going to break down why. But first of all, I'm Jonathan Roseland with Limitless Mindset, author of Don't Stick Your Dick in a Blender, How to Meet a Nice Girl Instead from a Tantric Husband with a Better Sex Life Than You. Sorry about this quick interruption. I've got an important call to action for you. Please go watch this video and subscribe to Limitless Mindset over on one of the alt tech platforms, Rumble or Odyssey. And that is where you can catch my latest videos along with browsing my entire library of content and videos and podcasts. Over 700 pieces of edifying content about biohacking, nootropics, smart drugs, anti-aging, life hacking, about my pragmatic full-spectrum anti-fragility philosophy. If you value health freedom, I urge you to get outside of your digital comfort zone just a little and vote for the kind of future you want with your attention. Join and use the pro free speech social media platforms. I have the links below this video to where you can connect with me on those platforms. I do pay more attention to the comments that I get on those. Please don't procrastinate any further in taking back your freedom and your privacy from big tech. Don't even pause this video. Just pick one of the alt tech platforms. I think that Odyssey is the best. It's kind it's a lot like YouTube. It's as good as YouTube as a video platform, but there's no annoying ads interrupting the videos. So just pick one of those. Again, I've got them linked below and join it in another tab or window while we get back to what you clicked on. So this video is a update to this article that I wrote years and years and years ago, Seducing Sofia, Bulgaria. And it turned out to be one of my most popular articles. Go figure, there's a lot of interest in seduction in this great city. So I'm going to go through the article here. There's some updates to it. There's some things that have changed for the uh, skirt chasers of Sofia. And there's some things that have changed for me. Notably, as I seduced Sophia, Sophia seduced me. I got and have remained married to a, a beautiful, witty, classy, intelligent, uh, joyful to be around Bulgarian girl. Pretty much every day you can find us strolling the center of town, walking her little ferocious Pomeranian. Uh, if you see us, you can come up and say hi. I don't mind at all. Just to, yeah, just look for a guy with a pretty Bulgarian girl and a little Pomeranian, a fluffy little dog, uh, somewhere around the center of the city. And uh, that'll be us. We wouldn't mind uh, chit-chatting with you for just a minute. And 
couple of things I want to run past you first before we get into this article. As an eight-year digital nomad pickup artist guy, I encountered dozens, if not hundreds, of men that traveled to exotic places and then they failed to get girlfriends, they failed to get dates, they failed to get laid. It's kind of pathetic, <laughs> really. Most of those guys out there traveling, trying to chase the skirts, they're kind of pathetic and they're not getting they're not getting what they what they want. They're not getting what they've traveled such a long way to try to get. And so that's why if you want to do things a little bit more intelligently, I wrote a book for you. It's called Don't Stick Your Dick in a Blender. And in that book, it's a long book. And there's at least one chapter that you really should read. And that is a deep dive chapter breaking down just what all of these guys are doing wrong who travel all the way to other countries and then uh, don't get girlfriends, don't get dates, don't even get laid. I do a deep dive chapter explaining what they are doing wrong on their international skirt chasing missions. So if you if you are going to spend the time and the money to come to Bulgaria or anywhere in Eastern Europe with the aim of seducing the local ladies, you are at least going to want to read the chapter, which is entitled Dating and Marrying Exotic Foreign Women. Do that. Please save yourself uh, a lot of time, a lot of money, and at least get that chapter out of the book. The book is eight ninety nine on my own website. You can find it linked below on LimitlessMindset.com. It was banned on Amazon because of the political correctness police, even though I don't say anything terribly offensive or misogynistic in the book. They banned it there, so you have to get it direct from me over on LimitlessMindset.com. And for $8.99, you get the EPUB book, the Moby book, which you can actually read on a Kindle device. And you also get the audio book, which is a long, detailed audio book. There's certain chapters in there that you're definitely going to want to listen to twice. Okay, so with that out of the way, I also have to mention that you are going to want to check out this article over on LimitlessMindset.com. Originally, I put it up on Medium and it kind of went viral there, but then there's like some updates to it. I want to make my articles accurate, you know, so I keep it accurate there on LimitlessMindset.com. I've got like some photos and imagery of the stuff that you're going to want to check out. So yeah, if you're going to come to Sofia or Bulgaria to try to seduce women like I did, then you want to be, you want to be prepared. Uh, preparation is the, the key to luck. What is the, uh, some kind of expression on that. Anyways, so like I said, I got paid more, got laid more, more lessons learned, more good memories, more friendships in Sofia. And I'm going to tell you why. So uh, As opposed to crediting this to Sophia itself or herself or some uh, unquantifiable metaphysical influence or self-help principle, I know exactly why my time in Sophia was so productive in the way that I wanted it to be. It's because I no-fabbed and I no-boozed for the majority of my time there. I completed 30 days of no fab and 90 days of no booze. And abstaining from these two vices simultaneously really is a synergistic life hack for productivity and happiness. As a man, these two habits really are symbiotic. When I'm no fabbing, I'm way more motivated to go out. 
uh, make friends and meet girls. But no fabbing for a long time, doing it for like 30 days, that requires some serious mental discipline, which is all but impossible if you are even a moderate social drinker. So I do urge the gents out there, if you're going to do a international skirt chasing mission, if you're going to fly into a country or a city for two weeks, a month, maybe longer with the intention of trying to get a girlfriend there, do no fab and no booze for the duration of the time there. And you're going to have just uh, a well of motivation to draw upon, which you wouldn't if you were perhaps uh, fabbing and boozing as you would normally. Trust me, trust me. Give this a shot. Give it, give it at least two weeks. I mean, if you're going to spend the time and money to fly to a new place to try to meet women, you might as well no fab and no booze anyways. I mean, it's going to save you money. Right. And then with the possible caveat that like if you're on a date and it's going uh, well, then maybe you want to have a drink or two with her. But otherwise, if it's like you and your buddy or you and random guys, why? Why? I, I don't see the point. OK, so let's move on to discussing the women, which is what you're really interested in. Right. So. Bulgarian women are aesthetically a whole lot closer to my fantasy girl. And I found my fantasy girl, my dream girl, here. So it worked out. Uh, Bulgarian women are curvier and um, perhaps on average you could say a little darker than um, Ukrainians or some of the other um, Eastern European nationalities, yet uh, Bulgarian women are refreshingly elegant and well put together compared to the frumpalicious Romanians, the uh, Romanian women. I wasn't all that impressed with it. So a Bulgarski trotting down the avenue in her heels, form-fitting jeans, and fashionable scarf she could easily be confused for a light-skinned Colombiana until she opened her mouth and spoke quite competent English to do a little bit of comparison. So most of the Eastern European woman stereotypes apply here. They are feminine and pleasant, relatively submissive, and they take extra care of their appearance, but you're not going to, you're probably not going to find them exploding with a ton of uh, personality. My wife is kind of uh, rare in this respect. And they also aren't going to be really chatty, like uh, modern Western women of Anglo extraction are. And the Bulgarian women often are not going to have a lot of money. So, yeah, most of the stereotypes apply here. Stereotypes exist for a reason. Um, at least in Sofia, the women, while not nearly as feminist as, say, German women, uh, which are, ugh, ugh, German women. Ugh, ugh. Sorry, I just threw up. In my, in my throat a little bit. German guys understand. So uh, Bulgarian women are uh, modern women. They speak English well. Most of them attend college and are eager to uh, discuss their careers or politics or world events. However, they are more family oriented. Almost all of them come from nuclear families and that's a really good thing for the guys out there that don't want to hashtag don't stick your dick in a blender. For the guys who want to keep their dicks away from the blenders, you want those uh, women from nuclear families. And they, uh, they seem to respect and love their families. You, do, you don't run into a lot of women that are like really uh, angry with the patriarchy. 
I met one single mother that I can think of. Originally, in the article, I said zero single mothers. Since then, I did meet one single mother. I'm sure that there are, I'm sure there are more here in the country of six million people. But in my social circle, yeah, I think, I think it was just a single circle mother, single mother that I ever met. That's, that's a pretty good sign. They are a little religious. They attend Eastern uh, Orthodox Church service a couple times a year, but most of them are not uh, pious practicing Christians. They're uh, nominally nominally Christian. So if you're a Christian, then it's a, then this is a fertile ground for you. I don't meet a lot of married young women as I have elsewhere in Eastern Europe. Yeah, some other places in Eastern Europe, like I, re- I seem to recall a co-working space and there was like a 21-year-old guy that worked at the co-working space, 21-year-old Ukrainian guy, and then there was a young lady of around the same age and they were both married at like a pretty young age. And it seems to me that uh, the Bulgarians will get married in their mid-20s their late twenties, they're getting they're getting married. Uh, not exactly, a, not exactly a good trend, I don't think. So Ukrainians age better. That's what I wrote at the time. I'm not sure about that. Um, although I will say that you do encounter, uh, the, you do you will see that most Bulgarian women over age 35 are still relatively attractive and skinny. If you're considering a long-term investment, like if you're considering a long-term relationship or getting married, you do want to take a look at her mother or take a look at maybe the other women in her family. And that will give you kind of like an approximation of... What's going to be in your bed in 20 years if you end up sticking together? Here in Bulgaria, something I found from living here is that the country actually has pretty high standards for things like organic food. The Bulgarian diet is actually, it's actually a pretty decent diet. And so this results in a women that age a bit more gracefully, certainly uh, more gracefully than American women. So that's that's a major plus. And I ended up sleeping with two women here. And I'm not sure if that's like enough uh, experience for me to rate the uh, promiscuousness or the general sluttiness of the Bulgarskis. But uh, based upon my experience and based upon the experience of other guys that I've talked with, they are probably a bit easier than Russian or Ukrainian women are. Um, But they definitely are going to require more investment than than Western women. With uh, the quintessential Western women she'll often hook up with you like two hours after meeting you if you if you uh, provide her with the right combination of uh, charm, cockiness, and vodka, right? And Bulgarian women are in general, we're make we're generalizing, okay, there's there's exceptions to everything. but in general, they're going to be, more conservative than that, but maybe not quite as conservative as like a uh, a farmer's daughter that you find in a little town in <laughs> Moldova, right? There, this is a yeah. I find Bulgaria to be like a nice balance. That's uh, that's part of the reason why I uh, ended up uh, staying with the woman that with the girl that became my wife and why I picked this as a place to live is I find it to be that balance in between the progressive West and in between a little bit more of a traditional kind of world, which is something 
that is uh, appealing to me for a lot of reasons. Next, let's discuss the nightlife. In nightclubs in Eastern Europe, what you see repeatedly is a table with a bunch of older guys who, with a bunch of, uh, of, of old guys, uh, maybe they're in their, like, their 40s, maybe, and they uh, look like they perhaps served together in a war and have been drinking hard since. And with those guys, there's some doll-faced and dolled up younger girls. And the girls dance alone. The guys just sit there trying to look tough while they uh, drink away half their, their paychecks. And uh, which kind of uh, reminds me a bit of uh, Colombia, where people go out in large groups and the guys always pay for everything, of course. But in Colombia, the guys and the girls, they actually dance with each other. If you go out with a group of girls and uh, maybe you spend $20 or whatever the equivalent is in Colombia or a lot of places in, in Latin America, um, on liquor, you will receive repeated uh, vigorous vertical lap dances, uh, reggaeton, reggaeton-powered vertical lap dances from the girls you go out with all night long. It's pretty fun, actually. It's a pretty good value. Um, whereas in Bulgaria and Eastern Europe, the men and the women are uh, barely touching each other going out. So I am not uh, a fan at all of like the mainstream nightlife scene in uh, Eastern Europe or here. I uh, haven't really been involved with this since I got married. And what I have heard consistently, this is my experience, experience of other guys, was that Sofia is a tough town for night game. Uh, different cultures have different attitudes about meeting new people while they're out uh, socializing in the evening. And in most countries, girls are pretty open to talking to a friendly foreigner for a few minutes. But in Bulgaria, not so much. I think it's more of a culture where people go out to socialize just with their current social group, with the people that they actually know. Usually, I was quite good at doing the cold approach thing, and I would uh, get myself at least a few minutes of a conversation from cold approaching, but in Sofia, when I did it in mainstream clubs at least, I would just have blowout after blowout. So if you want to do that, then you really have to play the numbers here. And this was consistent even at the more alternative kind of spots. I repeatedly got that cold-shouldered, icy response um, that I only usually get from the most uh, model-esque ladies hanging out in the swankiest of venues. I even got this same kind of blase vibe from the 15 or so sets that I did at a drum and bass rave that I went to with friends. And you might think that the, the plur chicks would be a little more excited about talking to an exotic cross-eyed guy like me while rolling their metaphysical balls off. Um, the, but they, they weren't. <laughs> they were not. Disappointment, again. The rave was a pretty stark contrast from the electronica festivals of my native Denver, Colorado. Uh, there was no lasers or cool event design, no go-go dancers, nobody dressed up in fabulous angel costumes, no cuddle piles on the floor of shirtless strangers giving each other massages. And while there were some cuties there, they definitely weren't uh, dressing to impress anyone. Uh, there was just a loud music, very loud music, and lots of flashing strobes. I also found, important point, 
One opener that does not work well here is asking if she speaks English. Don't do that. Counterintuitive to the way I'd like to uh, approach, the sets are more likely to hook if you roll up on them just completely disregarding their mother tongue. I mean, unless you're learning Bulgarian and you're, you've got some competence with it, just roll up and speak English to them. After going out clubbing about a dozen times, I concluded that mainstream nightclubs were not going to be my niche in Sofia. Now that I think about it, the 80 plus approaches I've done on the hyphy dance floors of Sofia, they yielded surprisingly few results. Contrary to a lot of my experiences in Columbia and Denver, Colorado, my most fruitful sets have not uh, occurred in loud, raucous nightclubs, but in salsa clubs, meetups, smoking areas, and patios. Bulgarian men and women are just not big fans of touching each other while dancing, at least in the mainstream clubs. From a pickup artist perspective, the trade-off for hanging out for hours and hours in mainstream clubs, blasting hip-hop or reggaeton, the trade-off is the likelihood of rapid keno escalation on the dance floor. And in a culture where girls are opposed to being dry humped and groped on the dance floor by perfect strangers while shaking their asses to the misogynistic lyrics of the latest Little Wayne club banger. In that kind of culture, I see a whole lot less reason to spend time in mainstream clubs. Salsa or Latin dancing turned out to be where the opportunity was in Sofia. And I'll explain to you why salsa clubs are a big win for pickup artists. First of all, guy to girl proportion, XX chromosomes often outnumbered XY in salsa clubs. In salsa clubs, there's almost always a free young lady sitting there bobbing her head, just waiting to be asked to dance. I've never had to wait more than 10 minutes in between sets in a salsa club. I've yet to experience a Latin club that is anything resembling a sausage fest. Secondly, in salsa clubs, you can find hotter girls often. Bulgarian ladies are pretty attractive, but at least during the winter, they try to convince you they are not with dorky sweaters and the uh, atrocious hipster style attire that is sweeping Europe. Girls at salsa clubs are the exception to this. They often really dress pretty sexy. Skirts, heels, cocktail dresses, and they pull it off without looking like total hookers. I think salsa chicks exercise a bit more and actually do a squats as they seem a bit more toned and curvaceous. Next benefit, you deal with less drunk people in salsa clubs. If you are kind of like me or as I was, and you don't like to drink while gaming, you'll find salsa clubs a lot more conducive to your temperament. About 60% of the ladies are stone sober. It's super rare that you'll encounter the kind of rude, drunken antics at a salsa club that you do so commonly at mainstream clubs. Next, ladies approach you. Yes, in the Latin salsa clubs, uh, girls will actually approach you sometimes and ask you to dance. One of the hottest ladies I met 
the first time I was in the country, actually cold approached me while I was standing alone beside the dance floor, antisocially playing on my phone. Boy, talk about a, a role reversal. That's not, not going to happen to you in a mainstream club. And then salsa clubs often have single ladies. Latin clubs are also a place where you can find the elusive one set who is not a hooker, just a normal lady out to socialize, make friends, move her hips, and sweat a little. The disadvantage of salsa clubs is that approaching and dancing with a lady is not an explicit way of communicating intent. That's kind of an important point. Just the fact that you approach her and dance with her is not necessarily communicating, hey, I'm attracted to you. Lots of guys and girls go salsa dancing just to dance, just for fun, apparently. Girls will dance with you who have no interest in actually getting to know you. You'll quickly observe that many guys who are amazing dancers, you'll notice that they have non-existent game. They will tear it up with a lady on the floor, get her all hot and sweaty, and then just leave. Or more likely, she'll leave him without making even the most minimal effort or attempt to have a conversation, banter, build rapport, or get a number or contact details from her. Actually, some of the best salsa dancers are gay guys, so you need to be a little bit more upfront about your interest. It's a little bit of a different game. You'll need to make a statements of intent. So yeah, it's, it's a bit different. The indirect thing is probably not going to be quite so effective in the salsa club scene, but I liked it. When I was a single guy, ah, it was such an improvement for me at least over the hanging out in the wild chaotic clubs. Let's move on to talking about the culture Bulgaria is one country where not drinking, you really will feel like an outsider. Every time I asked a bartender for a non-alcoholic beverage, they looked at me like I had just ordered a glass of abortion baby blood or something really terrible like that. When I first arrived in Sofia, I befriended two young Bulgarian guys who could be loosely described as hostile employees. And they were your typical piece of shit dudes who toked weed, drank beer, and smoked cigarettes all day and night. Yet, in the four days I stayed at the hostel, these two guys must have had about six different cute young ladies over to hang out. They watched really stupid movies and pop music videos for hours and hours with these girls. And this makes me uh, suspect that uh, Bulgarian girls are less susceptible to grown man game and respond better to party boy game. You'll have to do a little bit of experimentation there. Bulgarians are fairly ethnocentric. They don't really like gypsies and are naturally wary of Turks and Arabs. Although, I'll say they seem to... Uh, Really like uh, Americans and Anglo kind of guys, uh, despite us bombing their cities into rubble in World War II. They seem to have forgiven that one. Bulgarian, the language, is a southern scion of the Slavic language group. And 
To be honest, it's not worth learning unless you are going to make a serious commitment to this country. About 90% of the ladies you approach will speak English. A lot of older Bulgarians speak no English. And at the time, I spoke just enough Russian that I was able to navigate the few interactions that I had with them. If you can pick up like a little bit of Russian as you're traveling around Eastern Europe, that'll get you by with uh, taxi cab drivers here most of the time. Someone told me that Bulgarian ladies like to speak Spanish, and I discovered this to be the case frequently. Eastern European ladies romanticize Latin culture, and they yearn to portray themselves as cosmopolitan Europeans, uh, as opposed to products of their respective backwater countries that are still kind of shadowed by the ghost of the Soviet Union. The first three knockout Bulgarian girls I approached in a bar in Berlin, spoke Spanish, and actually about a third of the younger Bulgarian ladies I met in Sofia spoke at least a little Spanish and were eager to practice with me. So while I'm not a fan of like language tutor game, if uh, you speak some Spanish, that imbues a little bit of an advantage here, I found, actually. Moving on, let's discuss online game. And you guys, especially the ones of you that have read my book or followed me much, know that I am not a fan of online game. I kind of hate it. I kind of think that it's like one of the things that's just ruining civilization. My number one digital pickup line, which usually yields at least a 60% response rate, interestingly underperformed here. And I used it messaging uh, some ladies on couch surfing. I used it uh, texting ladies that I had met. And I used it doing some Facebook messaging. And it really fell on its face. I almost totally stopped using it. So that's, you know, so, so I stopped using it. It wasn't very effective. And you're, of course, wondering, what is my number one digital pickup line? And you know what? I, I need to promote my book. I need to sell some books. So you're going to have to read, you're going to have to pick up my book for that one. And you will find it in there in the chapter on online dating. I have a pretty good uh, digital pickup line. I haven't used it in a while, but when I was a single guy using it, mm, I figured out something that, that, that kind of gets results. So that is probably worth picking up my book alone. Let's talk about the weather here. I found Bulgaria to be a bastion from the soul-chilling and sock-soaking winter of Eastern Europe. I arrived in early January and the Balkan winter is downright moderate compared to Romania and Ukraine. Uh, where else have I been during the winter time in Europe? I think just, I think mostly Ukraine. I found it to be very, very moderate compared with uh, Kiev. I saw snow once, uh, many days I barely needed a coat. Bulgaria assuaged my vitamin D deficiency. Many days were sunny and I could hang out on my patio. It rained about every other day for a few hours. Not a torrential downpour, but it's a good idea to bring an umbrella with you. If you're a nomadic seducer in Europe, 
looking to geo-arbitrage your lifestyle and income, Bulgaria is a great option during the colder months. As you can see in this video blog that I did about meditation where I filmed in the city center, the weather is gloomy but not uh, bad enough to prevent you from doing some day gaming. And I pulled twice here just by offering adaptogenic tea, my magic herbal anti-aging tea, which uh, they could get exclusively back at my flat. And this was a little bit of an epiphany for me. In the past, I always thought I had to come up with really elaborate reasons to pull and special tea is enough. Next, let's talk about the cost of living. This is something that uh, unless you're wealthy, unless you uh, bought Bitcoin back in 2011 and then held on to it, you know, hopefully you weren't like me where you uh, bought Bitcoin, you got Bitcoin, and then you spent two Bitcoins in two weeks. I did that once, it was in Barcelona. It was a fun two weeks, but I do regret it. I do regret it a little bit. You're, you're probably concerned about the economics of the places that you're going in the world. So some good news, Sofia is cheaper than Berlin and Bucharest in my experience, but pricier than Kiev. If you're going to be staying in Sofia, don't waste your time staying at hostels, which cost about $10 nightly, even for a bed in a dorm. And they might, uh, be, they might be pricier than that. Now, uh, whereas I found private accommodation, uh, private rooms to be quite affordable here. I rented a spacious room in a penthouse off Airbnb near the center for $370 a month. And geez, we've had some inflation since then, haven't we? Like I said, you guys should be buying, uh, buying gold, buying, buying uh, Bitcoin. We've had some inflation, I don't know, $370 a month back in 2017. We'd have to do some calculations on that. You can kind of get the idea. It's, it's pretty affordable to stay in a fairly nice place. I'd wager that you could probably rent a room here for under $300 a month now. Groceries are a little pricier for Eastern Europe. My weekly budget for the two simple meals I eat at home was about $45 a week. Like in many countries, eating out is often a better value. A tasty sandwich or salad at a cafe is about $3 and a filling sushi dish at a nicer restaurant is about $10. A decent but not great quality coffee at a cafe is about a buck 50. A decent beer is about $3 and a glass of wine is even cheaper and the uh, crappy local beer is practically free. The most outstanding value I found was a 24-7 accessible co-working space in a um, not amazing location for $40 a month. I was pretty impressed with that. And then I also managed to get relaxing, um, but not exactly therapeutic and definitely not like sexy massages 60 minute massages for about $22, which is a pretty good value. And now I get uh, very relaxing, therapeutic, and definitely sexy massages from my wife for free. So I feel like I am winning in that regard. Let's talk about transportation. A Little bit of bad news, there is no Uber in Sofia, but there are two quite intuitive uh, 
apps, which are Taxi Me and Taxi Stars, that are almost as good as Uber. And they, uh, the taxi service here was so cheap that I got in the habit of taking taxis once or twice a day to get places. And I never had to wait more than 10 minutes for, uh, for a taxi. As I move towards the conclusion of this podcast, let's talk about the dogmatic pickup artist that I encountered here in Sofia. So, Sofia had a really good RSD group. Uh, you may recall with Real Social Dynamics, they at least uh, used to have these local chapters. They just have Facebook groups that you could join and then you could connect with wingmen in that city. Unfortunately, that has been shut down. You know, I think it's kind of a thing where the, uh, the censorship by Facebook of anything, uh, of things like pickup has, uh, they had to shut those groups down, which is too bad. Those groups were great places to meet people, to get motivated, to make friends. Now, what I would suggest actually, is if you're looking for a wingman in Sofia, I am not available because I'm a married guy now. I'm a family man now. I got two businesses to run. I don't got time to be out there in, in clubs or running around in the in the streets with you. But you could contact me and maybe I can uh, do some introductions, you know? I know I know a few guys that are still into the game here and maybe I could help make some uh, connections. So, but I got a little bit of a story about the dogmatic PUAs of Sofia. So they were doing a meetup and I arrived about 15 minutes late to their, to their meetup and everyone was speaking Bulgarian there. Out of, I think, 20 plus guys in the room, I was the only foreigner there. And they actually switched the entire meetup to English just so I could understand what was going on. And I thought that was extraordinarily uh, accommodating of them. I was really impressed by that. I was impressed by the, effa- by the fact that all 20 of the young Bulgarian guys there spoke English and understood English well enough that they were like, yeah, sure, we can, we can switch to this foreigner's language just so that he feels welcome here. That was, that was kind of a, that was kind of a special thing, right? So I befriended several of the PUAs from the group who seemed cool and who shared, uh, and I shared with them my most fertile hunting ground, which was the salsa Latin clubs. And here's the crazy thing. All but one of them refused to join me in my salsa gaming. To them, it just wasn't game if you didn't spend the night enduring blowout after blowout from the icy Balkan queens of the disco in those loud, annoying mainstream clubs. And I recall one young guy, a wingman I had, and how he was lamenting to me how hard it is to cold approach here. Yet he outright refused to join me in gaming the friendly girls at the salsa clubs because he didn't know how to dance and he didn't care to learn. It's really pickup dogmatism at its least pragmatic. So to each his own. If you want to be dogmatic, then that's fine, but I would I would urge you not to be. I would urge you to be a little bit more flexible. And I think that you're really going to enjoy the results that you get. So like I said, I did have to update this article because Sophia seduced me. 
and ended my career as a nomadic seducer dude. I met a really great girl that exceeded, uh, she has continued to exceed my expectations. She has continued to impress me and surprise me. And we have been together now for four years. And get this, we are now having better sex than we ever did before. You know how you hear the stereotype of, you know, a guy and a girl get together and they're infatuated with each other and they're having like really hot sex for the first year or two and then they get married and then the really hot sex kind of goes out the window. It has not been like that for us. As time has gone on, we've just fallen more and more in love and uh, life has just gotten rosier and rosier with her, with Mrs. Roseland. So that's really what I wish for everyone out there. And that's why I wrote this book, Don't Stick Your Dick in a Blender, How to Meet a Nice Girl Instead from a Tantric Husband with a Better Sex Life Than You. Because I wish that the decent men of this world could get into meaningful relationships with the kind of women that they deserve. And that requires kind of a shift in mindset and a shift in behavior. There's all these different layers of mainstream types of mindsets that society imbues us with the uh, the uh, promiscuity, the feminism, the nihilism, the hedonism, all these mainstream type of mindsets. And then there's a bunch of counterculture mindsets that are prevalent in kind of the, the pickup artist community kind of thing online. And even some of these counterculture mindsets are preventing you from finding the love, joy, and meaning that you seek. And in my book, I break all of this down. And it is over 100,000 words, which is actually quite, it's kind of long for a relationship book. Most, most books about dating and relationships are shorter than that. They're kind of shallow. And I wanted to treat this subject with the thoroughness that I thought it deserved. And I wanted to get kind of like granular on some of the techniques and strategies and life hacks and shortcuts that uh, have made such a big difference for uh, for me at least in having a really fulfilling, uh, beautiful relationship that infuses the rest of my life with uh, zest and joy and meaning. So I do hope that you check out the book and that you drop me a message. Um, if you're here in Sofia and you're kind of a guy that's into the personal growth kind of thing, drop me a line. Like I said, I am not going to be doing any uh, wing manning, but I might like to uh, make friends with uh, like-minded types out there. Again, I'm Jonathan with Limitless Mindset. Looking forward to a continued conversation with you.